You're listening to the Weekly Parsha Podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramat Bishim in Shisrael 5777-2017. This week's Parsha is Tazria Mitzorah, and I want to remind you all again about my Sefer, my book, Perfectly Imperfect, Breaking Out of the Ordinary and Striving for Greatness. It should be in stores near you right now, in Judaica stores near you, distributed by Feldheim. The book speaks about topics in personal growth, and this is the time between Pesach and Shavuos, to work on ourselves, an appropriate time to get my, my say for my new book. I'd like to speak about the Parsha. We have this week Tazria and Metzorah. We speak about the Metzorah, somebody who has a spiritual malaise, he has a spiritual malady, and it's called Saras, which can be translated as leprosy. It's not the leprosy of today, it's a spiritual type of leprosy, and it results because of a few different things. One of them, famously, is when a person speaks Lashon Hara, when he speaks negatively of others, speaks gossip, so that person can contract this diseased saras. Another way is through gaiva, through being haughty, being egotistical, that also can cause this problem. I'd like to share with you a beautiful medrash that speaks about the idea of saras, how it comes, why it comes, what is the source of it, what's the reason for it. Verse says like this, this is in chapter 13, verse 2. Adam ki yeh ba'or b'sari se'es, there's a pachas, there's a It speaks about the tahalich, the process that a person needs to go through. If he finds this leprosy on his skin, what he has to do, he brings it to the priest, to the Kohen. He has to be diagnosed, he has to go through a process in order to be matar, to purify himself. Hadahu d'ichsev, the Medrash says that this is what it means when it says in the verse, l'aseis l'ruach mishkal, to find a balance for the wind, umayim tikein bemida, and the water was prepared in precise measure. This is a verse in Job, in Eov, chapter 28, verse 25. And the first section of the Medrash seems to be unconnected to our Parsha, but it is, of course, connected, and we'll get back to that. But I'd like to bring it to the end of the Medrash, where it actually speaks about what this has to do with Tzaras, with our Parsha. Lasais l'ruach mishkal, the wind has a certain balance. Umayim tikein b'mida, the water was prepared in measure. Amar avyudim rib Shmuel. Rib Yudin said the name of Shmuel. Afilu tivrei Torah nitnu milamala, lo nitnu elo b'mida. Even the words of Torah. When a person is brought into the world, so he's given a certain measure, he's given a certain amount that he is supposed to receive. Each person, it's preordained, it's predetermined that this person is going to have it easy, let's say, or he's going to have special insight into learning psukim, to learning the verses, and that's his place in Torah. Other areas of Torah he can try to access, but it, it will be more difficult, be more challenging for him. Ve'elohein, Mikra, Mishnah, Talmud, Halachus, Vagoda. There's Psukim, there's Mishnayis, there's the Gemara, the Talmud, there's the, the laws, the Halachas, and there's a to the Medrash. So, Yesh Zeich Mikra. there are those who Hashem preordains that this person is going to, his specialty is going to be Mikra. It's going to be the verses, the, the, the Bible itself. Yeshla Mishnah, there are those who, when it comes to Mishnah, that's their specialty. Yeshla Talmud, there are those who their specialty is Gemara. Yeshla Haggadah, there are those who their specialty is Medrash. Yeshla Zechla Kulan, there are those who merit to have all of them. They're, they're well rounded. They're able to access all aspects of the Torah. So each person has a specific way that he comes into the world. There's a mishkal, there's a balance, there's a mida, there's a certain measure that each person is meant to access when it comes to Torah. It's imprinted into their soul. Dover acher, another explanation, lasais ruach mishkal, that, like we quoted this verse before, that is that Hashem makes the wind have a certain measure. B'noit sheva oilam. The way of the world is, habriyas amrim ishplani rucha yaseira. People can describe, everyone can see on a person that this person has a little extra wind. He's a little bit egotistical. Each plenty ruach kitsara. Person, we can see that this person is a little bit more humble. Shedinambai ruach ketikotain. There are some people we see that that person, they were born this way, that they have a little bit of a foolishness in them. Umayim tikem emida. And there's a measure when it comes to the water. Adam hayom ashukal chetzi emayim chetzi adam. The person, when it talks about the elements of the person, we have different elements in the world. We have fire, we have water, we have earth. So the human being is made up of two different elements, water and blood. When a person merits, and a person is in balance, so his blood has a certain measure, the, the blood is not greater than the water, and the water is not greater than the blood. 
When a person is spiritually, there's something out of balance in his spirituality. When things are out of balance, so he has too much water, there's too much water in his system and it overpowers the blood, so to speak. And he starts to emit different types of lechus, different types of moisture which comes out of him. And the reverse is also true. That sometimes a person can have too much blood. The blood becomes stronger. As a result, you know, the physical body always reflects the spiritual. And that's really the idea of the Mitzorah. That a person who's out of balance, we'll see what this means and how this applies to us, but the person who's out of balance spiritually, so on a physical level, that's manifest. And if he has more blood than water, on this, you know, the way the Medrash is explaining it or describing it, so he becomes a Mitzor, he becomes leprous. Hadahu dichsiv Adam, the Medrash finishes off and says, that's why in the verse which we quote at the beginning, Adam kiyeb or besarei, when a man shall have on his skin this tsaras, this leprosy, why is it referred to him as an Adam? Adam is the name of the first man. Why are we referring to ourselves in that way? Because the, the word Adam is oidam, which means or blood. Because sometimes there's an imbalance. There's too much blood. That's what the, the verse is telling us. Adam, that a person has too much blood if they've gone in the way of the, the things that caused saras, if they've behaved in that way, they sin in that way. So it increases the blood and it causes them to have saras. It causes them to have leprosy. So it's very interesting. It comes out that the verse which speaks about this wind and the, and the uh, mishkal, the balance of the wind, and the mida, which is the measure. Everything is measured in the human being. When a person is in the proper measure, when it comes to his spirituality, when it comes to his ego, you know, a person needs to be right-sized. A person needs to be aware of their talents, aware of who they are, and not try to extend beyond that. And also, not to think that they're less than they are. That's also incorrect. That also creates an imbalance. If a person is talented, if a person is able to sing beautifully, and they say, you know, I don't want to sing, I'm not interested in using my talents, that's also an imbalance. Or if a person can't sing very well, but they think that they can, and they try to sing in places where it's not appropriate for them, so then they're going to get in trouble. There's going to be an imbalance there as well. So that's a good mushroom, that's a good analogy for any of the talents of a person. If a person is egotistical, it really means that they're trying to extend into a place where they don't belong. They're trying to place themselves in a position which isn't correct for them. And the results will be that if a person extends themselves, they're, they're gaivadic, they're egotistical, or they're speaking about others in a negative way, which is also inappropriate and creates a spiritual imbalance, the result is that they contract saras, this spiritual leprosy. Now I'd like to come back to the first part of the Medrash. It's a remarkable, intriguing Medrash that seems unconnected at first, but actually is really saying a very similar idea. It says like this, The verse we, which we quoted speaks about this balance when it comes to the wind. So the wind, as we were speaking about until now, has to do with the spirituality. The word ruach doesn't just mean wind, it can also mean spirituality, it can mean the spirit of a person. So a person needs to have balance when it comes to spirituality, that's what we saw before. But in this part of the Medrash, so the word ruach is literal, it means the wind itself. There are a few places, says the Medrash, where the wind was imbalanced. It was too strong. It was stronger than it should be. And it could have caused the destruction of the world. These are the three circumstances. One was in the time of Job. One was in the time of Jonah. One was in the time of Elijah. In the times of Job, the verse says, There was a great wind that came from the other side of the wilderness. Bimei Yonah, Shanemar, the verse says in Jonah, that there was a great wind that was upon the sea and it threatened to capsize his ship. Bimei Leo, Shanemar, in the days of Elijah, the verse says, the verse describes the interaction that God has with Elijah and, he, and Hashem says to him, go out, stand on the mountain, etc. God passes, and there's a great wind, very powerful, such that it would destroy mountains. So we see three different verses that describe great winds, unusual winds. One in the time of Job, one in the time of Jonah, one in the time of Elijah. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shalom. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shalom said, He says that this wind was the same wind, it was the same power 
It was the same type of wind. It served a similar purpose. And it's interesting as we read this because it starts off sounding like this wind is something which is destructive for the whole world, but then it says that it's destructive just for the individual who is experiencing it. So let's let's stay together and focus here. Try to understand what's going on. Job's affected just his house. And it was, as the Eitz Yosef explains, it was the type of wind that it was clear that it was only happening to Job which would threaten his belief in God. That was the purpose of it, was, why is God doing this to me? The, the wind of Jonah also was only for his boat. God was trying to teach Elijah something, and that wind only affected him. The measure points out, that even though it's true that all three of them were great and all three of them had a similar aspect about them, nevertheless, Elijah's was the greatest of them. It was the most powerful of them. That's what the verse says, go out and you stand on the mountain. And I believe the measure is trying to show us that it was an individual, specialized wind that was just for him. So really, we need to understand, is this a general wind? Is this a wind that's going to affect the whole world, as it seemed to be saying at the at the very beginning? Because it said, it should have destroyed the world. So it sounds like it's something that affects everybody. But then the measure seems to switch and say that it's only affecting that individual, that person. So which way is it? Hold on to that question. One more piece in the Medrash that also seems to be disconnected, but we'll see is very much connected. Amr of Tanchum Barchia. Amr of Tanchum Barchia. Tanka Barchia said, and there are those who say that it was said in the name of the rabbis, This is an idea we've seen before. It's an amazing idea that all of the souls that Hashem intended should come into the world, all of the personalities that God wants to come into the world must exist before the, the King Messiah can come. In order for the Mashiach to come, Mashiach, he's the one who perfects the world. He's the one who brings the world to its completed state. It can only happen after all of the souls have been brought into the world. So here, we're using the same verse. We're speaking about this Ruach. And there's a Mishkal, there's a balance. The Medrash is telling us that there's a certain balance There was in, embedded into reality. That there are certain personalities, certain people, who need to come into the world and perform certain purposes. They need to perform certain jobs com- in order for there to be a completion in the world. In order for Mashiach to arrive, which represents that completion, everyone has to come into the world and perform to accomplish that which they've come into the world to accomplish. Now the Eitz Yosef points out that when we refer to Mashiach, to the Messiah, we refer to him as Ruach HaPenu, Mashiach Hashem. The wind of our nose, or the spirit of our nose, the Messiah of God. Why do we refer to Mashiach, to the Messiah, as the wind of our nose? The first place in the Torah that we hear about the wind or the ruach, the spirit that has to do with the nose, is when Hashem breathes into breathes that spirit, breathes that wind, the wind of life, into Adam Harishon, the first man. Hashem gives him life, gives him spirit. And interestingly, in our context, so we have this book, all of the souls that were meant to be created are referred to right here in the Medjish. There was a book of the first man. We referred to this, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, that there was a book Hashem wrote at the beginning of time, enumerating all of the human beings and all of that which they were meant to accomplish. And that's that's ingrained into reality, and they're all pieces of that original soul of Adam Harishon, of the first man. So the Ruach Apoy, the spirit which is imbued into Adam, that's blown into his nose, so to speak, that is, that spirit, we are all pieces of that spirit, of that Ruach. And so the, the first man encapsulates, incorporates all of humanity into him. We all have to come into existence, accomplish what we're meant to accomplish, before Mashiach, who is a reincarnation of Adam HaRishon. He's the same soul as the first man. So he also includes all of us. That can only happen when we have all come into the world and accomplished that which we are meant to accomplish. It's an amazing thing. So the Ruach HaPenu, Mashiach is the one who is the spirit who encompasses all of us, just like Adam is the one who encompasses all of of mankind, of all humanity. And it's an amazing thing if you think about it. You know, Mashiach is going to come, the Messiah is going to come. And what's he going to look like? How will everyone accept him? 
And the answer is that when you look at Mashiach, when you look at the Messiah, you will see yourself. When I look at Mashiach, I will see myself. Everyone will be able to see themselves because of the fact that he includes everybody. He has a piece of everyone's soul within him. Everyone will feel like this person understands him. This person will be able to guide every one of us. That's why the Psukim, when they speak about Mashiach, when, they speak, when the verses speak about the Messiah, it speaks about him as someone who's about, about youth. He's someone who has the ability to give advice. He's on the mark. Because he incorporates everyone into him, he's the one who can guide everyone to their purpose. But really what we're saying here is that the Ruach, the wind or the spirit, which is Mashiach, his purpose is to bring everything into balance, to place everyone in their right place. No one is greater than anyone else. No one is egotistical. And it doesn't mean that someone doesn't have a significant job and it looks like someone else has a smaller job. But everyone understands they're all pieces of a greater whole. They're all essential to Hashem's great plan. And that's this book, this Sefer Taldus Adam, which speaks about every person's individuality, who they are, what their purpose is, and how they are essential to the plan of creation. If one is missing, we can't have Mashiach, the Messiah can't arrive. What that really means is that the Messiah, whose job is to put everyone in balance, his job is not complete until everyone is in their place, doing what they're supposed to do. Now let's look at the previous concept, which had to do with a wind that was very great and was blowing in such a way that it potentially could cause destruction. We said, does it cause destruction to the whole world? Or is it individual to Elio, to Yona, to Eov? And the answer is that they're both really true. And it's, it's most clear in the case of Yona and Elio, and I'll focus on them, that they were individuals who had a level of prophecy. They were able to see things. They had a message which was for the entire Jewish people. Or for Yonah, it was for this great city of Nineveh of 100,000 100, people. Because they had that message, because they were a soul that incorporated all those people into themselves, Elio's message was for the Jewish people as a whole. And Yonah's message was for that great city. Because they had that type of soul, which was all-inclusive, in a certain way, they parallel the idea of Mashiach. So that wind was for them. When, when they were not willing to give over the message that they were meant to give over. For Yonah, it was to give over to Ninveh. For Elijah, it was to give over to the Jewish people as a whole. When they were unwilling to give over that message, there was an imbalance that was created. Their job was to bring the Jewish people into balance. For Elio, for Yonah, his job was to bring the city of Ninveh back into balance by showing them the error of their ways. So that great wind represented to them individually something which was true on a global level, which was that there was a destruction that was happening, there was an imbalance in the people that they were meant to guide and show and instruct to repent. Because of that imbalance, destruction was inevitable, that it would come on the world. And when Yonah indeed goes and guides those people, gives them the musr, gives them the direction, shows them the error of their ways, so then Hashem's wrath is abated, and all is well. Everything comes back into balance. But that's his job. That's Yonah's job. In order that the Ruach, that great wind which is threatening to cause destruction, in order for that wind to, to calm down, everything, the wind, the souls of those individuals whom he's meant to instruct and who he represents, they have to be brought back into the proper balance. This, in essence, is what's going on when it comes to the Tsaras. When a person has the proper balance, when he knows his place, when he's done a sin, and he recognizes that he's sinned, when he recognizes that his ego has gotten the better of him, and he brings himself back into a place of anava, of humility, so then everything gets back into a place of balance. His spirit, his ruach, comes into a place of balance. His wind becomes calm down, so to speak. It's very interesting, when we speak about a person who's haughty, we refer to him as that he's, that he's full of hot air. Right? It's the same concept. The, the ruach, the wind, the spirit of a person is affected by his ego when he's not in balance. And so the Medrash's instruction is that just like we see when it comes to Elio, to Yonah, to Eof, that they needed to watch out. There was a great wind which represented that there was an imbalance in them, and that there was an imbalance in those that they needed to direct. So too for each of us. We need to see where there's an imbalance. We need to see where, you know, in, in the olden times, so we would immediately detect something on our skin, and we would know that there was an imbalance on a spiritual level. It, the spiritual was more clearly manifest in the physical. But the Torah is forever, its message is eternal, and it's telling us something for us, and that is that we need to see and recognize and look for 
those places where our wind, where our spirit is out of balance. And we need to get, like the verse says in Job, we need to find the balance for our wind, for our spirit. We need that water to come back into its proper measure so that it's not Adam Kiyab or Basari, it's not somebody whose, whose blood has become too great such that it causes this leprosy. We need to recognize where there's an imbalance and try to our best, to the best of our ability, to bring ourselves back into balance. So I want to bless you and please bless me. Hashem should help us to indeed recognize and be interested and try to see where it is. And sometimes we're going to get feedback. Hashem should help us to appreciate the feedback, not to reject that feedback from others, the way others interact with us as a result of our imbalances. Hashem should help us to be able to recognize it, to be able to work on it, and to be able to find that proper balance. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.